Hi guys, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, I'll just give everybody a few more seconds um, to, to join in as, as people are coming in. Um, while I do that, um, I'm going to launch a poll question for everybody to take a look at and perhaps you could give us your thoughts. Um, and we'll refer back to this uh, during the session. Hi to those of you just joining. Just give everyone a few more moments, thank you. <clears throat> okay, just give it a few more seconds. Okay, um, it's it's a warm day, so we'll we'll make a start. Um, we've got a lot to get through today. Um, thank you all so much for joining us on a sunny evening. Um, welcome. You know, welcome to, to the webinar. Um, I'll do some quick introductions before we get started um, and I'll talk you around uh, how, how you can ask us your questions. Um, so today we're going to be talking about staircasing on your shared ownership home, um, how it works, what it costs and why it might be the right solution for you. So before we, we get cracking with that, um, my name's Lisa um, I'm the moderator today um, and I'm joined by a panel of, of shared Shared ownership and staircasing experts. Um, so I'll work my way around so everybody can say hello. Um, Luke, would you like to start? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Luke Harvey, uh, and I'm a paralegal at Capstick Solicitors LLP. Um, I mainly act for housing associations on various shared ownership matters, uh, but staircasing takes up the bulk of my work. Uh, I do a lot of work with Gateway um, and my fellow panellist, uh, Chanel. Uh, so there's going to be a good to fair chance that, that I'll be involved if you decide to purchase more shares in your home. Great. And Gary? Yeah, hi, everybody. My name is Gary Whitehead. Um, I'm a director at Town & Country Mortgage Services. Um, we're a firm of mortgage brokers. We specialise in the new build sector, but also the affordable housing sector. So um, we're very familiar with organising you know, mortgages for people to buy their first property, um, but also then um, the staircasing side of things as well. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions that you've heard us today. Thank you. And Chanel. Hi, everyone. My name is Chanel Critchlow and I'm the sales and marketing manager at Gateway. And my team deal, deals with the staircasing process. Fab. Thank you. Um, so if you have any questions during the session, please do ask them. You can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen um, and we'll ask the questions as we go. And we've got a little bit of time at the end as well to, to pick up on these. So, so please do get your questions coming in. Um, as I said, quite a lot to get through today. So let's get started. Um, before, before we do, let's just have a look at the results of these, these poll questions. Um, so the first question I asked you was, was whether you knew that staircasing was an option for you. Um, so 93% of you said yes, which is, which is really promising. Um, and, and I also asked, have you ever considered staircasing? And, and slightly less of you, so 80% have said yes, uh, and 13% not sure. So let's see if we can give you a bit more information um, on staircasing today and see if that, if that can change your mind. Um, Okay, so our first topic then is, you know, what is staircasing? Why, why would you do this? Um, Chanel, can you talk us through what staircasing is and, and how it works? Yeah, so staircasing is when the shared owner buys more shares in their property. Um, so they can either buy 10% share tranche, it depends really on, on what their lease is. Um, some shared owners can actually staircase up to 100% and own the whole property in itself, depending on what the lease says. Um, so yeah, staircasing is a way of purchasing more on your property because as obviously, as you know, for shared ownership, when you purchase shared ownership, you buy a share, but then eventually once you're in the property, you can then um, invest more within the property. Great. Are there any restrictions on people when purchasing more shares? What's the criteria that people have to meet? Yeah, so there are a few restrictions. So one of them, you know, you do need to not be in any arrears, rent arrears or mortgage arrears um, when starting your staircasing application. And also as well, there's some restrictions in the lease, um, which I know Luke will probably go further to talk about. But there is some restrictions where shared owners can't buy 100% 
Um, so it's always good to check to check your lease. Or if you're unsure, you know, you can always email the sales team and we'll be able to let you know. Great. And what are the benefits of staircasing? Why should people consider this? Yeah, there's loads of benefits on staircasing. So obviously, the more shares that you buy, the less that your rent will be. Or obviously, if you purchase 100%, then you'll no longer pay rent in the property. There's um, a higher return investment if you decide to sell your home, you know, you'll make a profit on a higher share um, or even if you buy mm -hmm. them. And also as well, I would say there's great control. So if you own 100%, say, for instance, you can sell your property on the open market straight away. You can choose the, the agent that you want to sell with. Um, so, yeah, so there's really great benefits. So, as I said, great benefits, your rent dec um, decreases or if you own 100 percent, you don't pay rent at all. Um, and then you have a high investment within the property. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Luke, um, over to you then. Could you maybe explain the process a little bit more um, of buying more shares and how that works? What steps do people need to take? Yeah, of course. Um, I think it's worth beginning by saying that, you know, the good thing about staircasing from, from a legal point of view is that most of the, the technicalities that, that you would deal with um, are dealt with by what's called the staircasing schedule um, of your lease. Um, so I, I definitely encourage anybody watching um, to have a look through um, those just to get to grips with their lease. Um, normally you can find these between schedules four and six. So, so definitely take a, a flick through uh, when you get the chance to. Um, the, the very first step that, that you'll take when you begin your staircasing is what's called serving notice. Uh, this is just a, a fancy way of saying uh, that you, um, to let your landlord know um, that you wish to, to purchase more, more shares uh, in your property, essentially. Uh, but when you do this, you, your landlords will run through the, the restrictions and requirements um, to proceed, as, as Chanel has discussed. Um, that there are some instances where you can only buy a maximum percentage um, and that's because that, that there are certain legal requirements that, that you can't own 100 percent of, of your property um, at this point but when you serve notice um, you may want to uh, appoint a solicitor uh, to start to deal with the, the matter on your behalf um, to deal with the, the legal side from, from your perspective uh, the, the next stage would be to acquire an evaluation uh, your landlord will usually do this for you um, and you will be required uh, under your lease um, to cover the cost of this. Um, it, a risk valuation is, is needed because essentially we need to find out exactly how much uh, the share that you want to purchase is worth, so, so how much uh, you will pay. Uh, valuations are, are normally valid for three months from the date that they're issued, uh, unless they say otherwise. Uh, but of course, you know, although that gives us a window of three months to complete, um, you can always uh, acquire a evaluation extension if, if you don't reach that, that particular time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, once a valuation has been uh, acquired, um, the, the, the next stage is that someone such as myself uh, at Capsticks would, would then be instructed by uh, the landlord uh, to proceed with, with the staircasing. Um, in a nutshell, that, that there are two different types of, of staircasings. Um, there are interim and, and there are final. Uh, interim is, is essentially where you will own less than 100% once you've purchased those additional shares. Um, whereas, of course, final staircasing would be where you are taking that final staircase up to 100%. Um, now, the reason why I say this is because that for, from a a legal point of view but there is a slight difference between the two um, and that's that that essentially means that, that we need to review your lease in a slightly different way uh, and we might have to do slightly additional uh, steps uh, depending on, on which type it is uh, for an interim so less than 100 percent uh, we would need to make sure that the landlord approves your mortgage if, if that is what you're requiring uh, to, to fund the share purchase and that's just because our client, the, the landlord, would, would still own some of the, the equity, so some of the share in the property. Uh, whereas for a final staircasing, we, we wouldn't need to do that. So we wouldn't need to approve uh, your mortgage. Uh, but instead, we, we would have a look through your lease to see um, if there are any you know, specific clauses and, and restrictions that, that would need to be removed when you own 100%, um, because some clauses, clauses aren't appropriate where you're where you own the whole of your, your property, so to speak. 
Um, once we've had a review of the lease and, and we, we know exactly exactly what, what clauses need to be removed, etc., and we've, we've got the valuation in place, um, we would then go ahead and draft what's called a memorandum of staircasing. Uh, this essentially just documents that the transaction, it's, um, it's something that you will sign uh, as well as the landlord uh, to, to confirm that, that you bought those extra shares um, in, in essence. Uh, in the background, but once, whilst we're getting you to sign uh, your memorandum and any other documents such as a transfer, you know, if, if you're uh, staircasing up to 100%, uh, we would also deal with any legal technicalities on behalf of the landlords. Uh, and similarly, your, your solicitor will, will deal with the same on your behalf. Uh, so, so the transaction tends to be very, very smooth. Um, once, once all documents are signed, so the, the memorandum that, that you will have signed to, to confirm that, that share that you purchased, uh, we will then agree a what's called a completion date, uh, where the memorandum will, will be dated. Uh, you will then pay uh, the premium that, that you uh, are acquiring the, the share for, along with any rent and service charge arrears uh, on the account that the documents are then dated, um, and you have officially purchased more, more shares in your home. Uh, Great. Um, I mean, Luke, I, th I think you probably covered this um, and I was, I was going to ask really what, what your role is in the process, but I guess if you sort of explained that and, and really it's to help sort of bring everything along and, and, and you'd be there to help help the customer buy those shares sort of and guide them through that process. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so my, my role is, is essentially just to make sure that all of the legal requirements, so, so I mentioned earlier on uh, about the, the staircasing schedule that that's in that will be in your lease as a shared owner. I'm just out there to make sure that all of those requirements are met, uh, particularly with the you know the valuation, for example, um, and just to make sure that, that the transaction runs as smoothly as possible. And and they they, they do the staircasings are, are a very smooth transaction. Um, as I said, that there are two different types of staircasing, you know, interim and final. Um, and I'm just there to make sure that that we do everything we need to do as required by by the lease as we progress. Uh, so I mentioned, you know, that there might be a transfer, for example, of, of a freehold on final staircasing and, and mortgage approval and so on. I, I will check those things as I act for the landlord. I will check those things and, and make sure that they're carried out. Um, and as I said as well, I, I will also deal with any other um, kind of niggling legal restrictions, etc. Um, on behalf of the landlord um, as I go through. And, and similarly, that the solicitor acting on, on behalf of the the buyer, the, the leaseholder, will do the same thing. So we're just there to make sure that everything runs smoothly in, in, a, in a nutshell. Great, thank you. Um, so how much does it cost then? This is probably the, the, the main question. Um, Gary, you're going to talk to us a little bit about, about the money side of things. So um, can we start with the question of, of what happens to the existing mortgage if people staircase? Yeah, sure. So quite, quite often, coincidentally, um, we can be the first kind of point of contact with the customer that kind of triggers this conversation. So if you can imagine, um, we've got many, many customers that we've organized the, the mortgage for their first purchase. And what then happens moving forward is we would obviously like to look after that customer for, for as long as they would like us to. So um, we're in regular contact with our customers, um, but the, um, the, the, the kind of the mortgage that's organized initially is for a set period of time. Um, so everybody will probably um, appreciate that they'll take a product out with the mortgage lender. Um, and that might be, for example, a fixed rate product, uh, but it has an end date. And that tends to be either a two year fixed rate, a three year, maybe a five year deal. So quite common um, on a shared ownership when that mortgage comes up for review. It's in our interest to, you know, give the customer the best advice and, and bring that up in conversation. So sometimes they've thought about it, sometimes they haven't, but we'll always encourage that discussion at the time. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, it almost, it's, it's a good in to start talking about staircasing as we've, you know, had a mortgage for two, three, five years. Their circumstances may well be different to when they originally bought the property. Um, so we'd have a discussion around that. So um, in, in, in answer to your question, um, Lisa, as far as what happens with the existing mortgage, it's almost you're killing two or three birds with one stone. So as part of the mortgage review process, um, you know, we may find that it's a case of, right, actually that mortgage um, is now going to be moved to a new provider. And at the same time, we're going to consider um, because you can afford, you know, a, a, a bigger monthly outgoing, um, you, you've improved your rate. 
which has given you some surplus monies each month to spend. Um, there are various things will come up in discussion around what we're going to do with the current mortgage um, before we commit to, to, to anything else. So it's a real good kind of discussion point at that time of, you know, your, your mortgage coming up for review, really. So um, it may be that we keep, um, keep you with your existing mortgage provider and we review things and we look to maybe, you know, there are different ways of facilitating staircasing, but obviously the most common one, it tends to be, because it's a lot of money, is to, is to, is to, to use a mortgage for that. So that would be um, reviewing the existing mortgage. It might be increasing the existing mortgage with the existing lender, or it might be what we call a remortgage, where we will look at the open market as part of the, the product review, we'll, 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 we'll then do additional borrowing at the same time with a new provider, um, depending on the customer circumstances, the affordability and the rates that are out there, really. So, yeah, that kind of how, how it works, really, with the existing mortgage. So it doesn't, the existing mortgage doesn't have to stay where it is. It would naturally actually be reviewed whether they're staircasing or not. And that might involve staying with the current lender or moving to a new provider. Sure. And, and as the broker, I, 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 again, I assume that you, you would be there to sort of guide the customer and help them through that. 100 percent. Yeah, we hold their hand all the way through because you know, mortgages are, are complex at the best of times when you've got a shared ownership and you're discussing other elements of it sort of thing. Then, you know, we would work closely with with the customer, but also with um, Gateway and with the solicitor as well. Um, everybody's very, very familiar with this, but, you know, it may not be as, as, as familiar for for, for, for potential leaseholders so yeah we're, we're here to hold their hand really and, and help explain it and, and walk them through it great um so what fees are associated then with staircasing so um again from uh firstly on from a mortgage point of view um when the mortgage comes up for review um there might be certain fees associated with the mortgage lender um, that they might have um, come across when they first bought the property and organized the mortgage such as um, mortgage um, product fees arrangement fees um, a booking fee so kind of various terminologies are used but it's generally based on the product that they've that they've chosen so and, and that can naturally happen whether they're staircasing or not um, again we would look at the products available um, because some products um, are not cost effective to carry a fee. So there are some fees free mortgage products, basically. So from the actual mortgage side of things, there may be little or nothing to pay. Um, there is also, um, as Luke touched on, um, a valuation to be carried out. Now, um, strictly speaking, there are two valuations that need to be done because the mortgage lender will want to review their security and they'll want to do their own valuation. Um, um, and they could charge you for that. But generally on a mortgage, on a remortgage, the lenders, as part of their remortgage package, they do it as, as a free service. So um, there shouldn't be any charge with most lenders from that point of view. Um, but the fee that they may well incur, as Luke touched on, is the actual independent RICS valuation, which has to be carried out. Um, and they are two separate valuations for each party because the mortgage lender will want to use their own independent valuer. Um, irrespective of the, what the RICS valuations come in at. Um, but obviously we need both of them as guidance um, to know how much we're going to staircase and the value of that next tranche share that they're buying. Um, and likewise, from a mortgage lender point of view, the valuer, we, we need to make sure that the valuation is sufficient to be able to, to take on that further borrowing within the mortgage. Um, that aside, um, it's really a case of... Um, some legal costs, which again, Luke's touched on. There are some costs for the conveyancing side. Um, and there are, again, maybe Chanel can touch on this, um, potentially some administrative costs or legal costs from, from, the, from the housing association point of view as well. Is there Chanel? Um, oh, am I on mute? Am I on mute? No, I'm not on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't highlight. Um, yeah, no, there are there are costs. Um, so obviously we will we will pay um cap sticks. Um, so cap sticks will will let us know what their fee is and pass that on to to the leaseholder. And we of course will charge um a fee for the valuation. Um, so that's done by Rick's a Rick's valuer. So that's that's it. We actually don't charge yeah. administration cost. Um, okay. It would just be capsis cost and the valuation cost. There is one other potential that we should always be aware of, but it doesn't always apply. And um, it's quite topical at the moment, but there is a potential stamp duty cost, isn't there, Luke? Um, because you're buying further shares in your property at the end of the day. So, but it very much depends 
what the stamp duty rules were when you bought the property um, and what you exercised at that time, because you can exercise the option to pay the full stamp duty at initial purchase, can't you, Luke? Or you can decide to delay um, any further stamp duty when you buy further shares. But it very much, again, it's a bit of a moving target because, as we know, the government decide to um, offer certain incentives from, period from time to time, like the stamp duty holiday that's just been on, or they might turn around, um, you know, they could increase and decrease, you know, different stamp duty taxes, land taxes. So um, it's just something to always be aware of and be on, be on your guard that, you know, it could be an expense, it could be quite a, a costly expense, or it could be zero. Sure. Um, can you run through sort of a you know a financial case study for us? I understand obviously every every individual case is different and everybody's circumstances are different. But maybe sort of a snapshot of of what it could cost somebody to do this. Yeah. So as I say, from from a lender point of view, um, um, just breaking it down for, for everybody, it could be zero from a lender point of view. It could be on average, most mortgage products come with what we would call a 999 product fee. Um, so we would work that out. So potentially up to a thousand pounds from the lender. Um, and then mm -hmm. um, we've got the um, independent RICS valuation, which in the region of 300 pounds. Um, and then we've got the legal costs associated, um, which again, Luke, you might be able to just help chip in and help me out here because I don't want to speak out of turn and, and, and over over quote or under quote <laughs> from a legal perspective what was kind of typical oh it, it would be difficult uh, of, of course uh, us at cap sticks we act for, yeah. for the landlords um, and the landlords yeah. gateway as chanel said would, would cover our fees um yeah we, we would charge normally something in the region of 400 pounds yeah um, yeah for staircasing it, it would depend on on the individual solicitor acting acting for the lease yeah. holder I mean, I would generally say um, for a um, with, with a with a remortgage involving staircasing um, and using an, your own independent solicitor, you probably need to set aside maybe, you know, maybe another thousand, twelve hundred pounds, something like that, all in all. Um, and then obviously stamp duty is a hard one to answer because it very much depends on, you know, the figures and, and what the current situation is as far as um, stamp duty land tax costs. But that aside, you know, so overall, you could say if, if you've got something in the region of maybe two and a half to three thousand pounds, that should be ample to facilitate the whole staircasing process, which is a lot of money. Um, but what you're then getting, obviously, in the benefit of, of, of a larger share um, ownership, then, you know, it could be very valuable. And of course, no, no moving costs if you're staircasing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> great. Thank you. Um, that's great. What you know, really good summary of, of how staircasing works. And thank you all very much. Um, we've had a few questions come in, so I'll, I'll tackle some of these. Um, anyone, anyone listening, you know, do feel free to send in questions. We've, we've still got time to take those. Um, so I'll work through some of these. Um, Chanel, this one might be one for you. What's what's the first step? What If somebody wants to do this, what, what's the first thing they need to do? Yeah, they wanted to um, progress with staircasing. They can go onto our website, um, gatewayhousing.org.uk and download a staircasing application form or they can email our sales inbox, which is sales at gatewayhousing.org.uk. And we're able to send them over um, a leaflet and, and a application form. So that will be the first steps that they can do. Um, and then once that's done, if they complete their form, we can instruct um, a valuer to come and value their property. So the valuer will actually contact them to see you know, when they're available for them to attend their property and value their property. Um, Gary, this this might be one for you. Um, can I can I sell my shared ownership home if I staircase to one hundred percent? Yes, yes, you can. Yes, um, because you are then the sole owner of the property. So um, yeah, you then own it like you would own a normal property, whether it's leasehold or freehold. So you're perfectly entitled to go and, and sell it, and obviously at the best possible price, and you know the profits are yours. Um, yeah. That's great. Um, and um, Chanel, another one for you, maybe. Um, do I have to wait a certain period of time before I can staircase? 
Yeah, it depends on what it says in your lease. Um, but usually it's three months before you can actually um, staircase once you've purchased the property. But as I said, it depends on what is actually written in your lease. And I, I think I've kind of just, just add a little bit that um, from, a, from a mortgage lender perspective, um, there are minimum periods in which you have to have your mortgage active before um, you can do further borrowing on the mortgage. Yeah, that's how you wanted to facilitate the staircasing. So if you've got a lump sum of money and you want to use that, then obviously no mortgage involved, absolutely fine. But if you do want to use your mortgage, then most lenders have a minimum of six months in that the mortgage needs to be active or six months mortgage payments made before they'll consider any further borrowing. Um, maybe maybe one, Chanel, Luke, you might want to take this. How, how many times can I staircase? Yep, so th this will, again, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be repetitive, but it will depend on, on the requirements of your specific lease, um, but, which is why, why I say have, have a look through the, the staircasing schedule um, of your lease. Just, just take a flick through. Uh, it's quite an accessible uh, schedule to read through, but um, Usually, um, it will either have something what, that's called a, a specified proportion. Uh, so that's uh, a fancy term for saying uh, a certain increment that, that you need to staircase in. Uh, this will normally be between 5 and 25% uh, in one go. Um, but it also may say, for example, that you, need, you can only staircase up to three times before you hit 100%. Uh, so that's definitely something worth uh, bearing in mind uh, before you proceed. Okay, so somebody here has, has asked a more specific question. If they already own 50%, can they then staircase to the second 50% all in one go? But as you're saying, it's, it's dependent on their own, their own lease and their own situation. It does, yeah, but I, I've yet to encounter a lease that says you can't staircase from, from 50 to 100% um, in, in one go. Um, but, but again, I, I think it was something that, that was touched on with regards to, to the mortgage. Uh, you may have to wait a certain period but before redeeming that. So again, it's, it's always best to check in with, with, with your landlord and, and with your mortgage provider um, as necessary. Sure, thank you. Um, this is a, another question. I don't know, Gary, if this is, comes back to something you were talking about earlier. Um, somebody has asked, um, I presume that in terms of costs of mortgage rates and things, it is, it's always better to wait until your mod mortgage product is ending before staircasing. Quite often, yes, um, because the product that you're on um, has an end date. And if you try and break the terms of that contract early, then there are the early repayment charges, which I'm sure would have been explained in, in the first place when they took out their mortgage. So, yes, that, that, that is uh, a really good point. And that's why we often bring it up for discussion when the mortgage comes up for review, um, because to do it before then is available but you could trigger that penalty charge if you want to use the mortgage um, but there are ways to gain around that because you may not need a mortgage to fund it as i say which means you're not disturbing the current mortgage contract um, or it could be that you want to add an additional um, uh, borrowing on top of the existing mortgage contract as long as it's with the same mortgage lender so you could almost have what we call kind of sub account so your main mortgage is, is account one but you then have a sub account two that runs alongside it um, and therefore you're not disturbing part one and part two will run alongside it um, so there are ways if you feel that actually you know i've maybe taken out committed myself to a five-year fixed rate that's a long time and circumstances could change and you might find that in two or three years time it's right for you to go and staircase and we want to use the mortgage to facilitate that then as I say, there are ways and means of doing that without disturbing the current the current mortgage. But again, what we would do as you know, kind of a full mortgage review for a customer, we would we would consider what those penalty charges are for disturbing part one. And sometimes, where the mortgage rates have improved significantly, it could actually be more cost effective to say, do you know what? Let's actually put both bits together, absorb the penalty within the extra borrowing rather than it coming out of your own pocket. Um, and you've got a far better rate overall and actually your monthly outgoings are, you know, are, are far better. So, you know, there's different ways of looking at it. So it's not always a complete no, we've got to wait. There are always, you know, ways of, of discussing it. So. Great. Um, and another question, I, I don't know who, who could answer this. I know, I know we're not, we don't have a valuer in the room, um, but somebody's asked how are um, improvements factored into the value of property? I, I assume that they yeah. are. I, I can answer that. Um, for, for the purposes of staircasing, they are disregarded. 
that they are disregarded. So if you made any improvements to, to a property, the, the risk valuation uh, should it should exclude them um, from from the, the market value for the purposes of staircasing, that is. Good question. Just to um, add to that, if if there are any improvements that have been done on the property, and um, when making the application form, it's good to let the housing association know. So when we are instructing the RIC surveyor, um, we'll let them know, you know, that there has been improvements done on the property, um, and they can disregard that in within the valuation. Sure. Good question. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Um, I'm conscious of time um, and there's one question I do want to get to today. Um, I, th I think it's important we address this one. Um, some of you might have read about um, ESW1 forms um, and, and see, seen the news um, on this topic. So I think I think it's important we address this. Um, Gary, can you explain what this form is and, and why it's required and, and what the situation is? Yeah, basically, um, it, it's a form that's been um, spoke about over the last 12, 18 months um, for um, all, all flats, basically. Um, and it was initially supposed to be introduced for high higher rise. But um, as I think everybody's found out, it's pretty much been applied to all flats across the board. Um, it's very much um, a hot topic and it's been um, interpreted very differently by, you know, leaseholders, um, homeowners, um, housing associations, but also, more importantly, the mortgage lenders and valuers. Um, but basically, it's a tool um, to try and um, simplify things. Um, questionable whether it's simplified things, um, but it basically, the lenders um, are, are, are very much um, work alongside the independent valuers. Um, and the valuers um, have often looked at a, a, a property at a building and thought, OK, is this safe? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, with what's gone on, um, so they'll almost use a matrix um, basically, and 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 to try and simplify things. What they what they've what they've ended up doing of late is looking at it as to whether it's um, four or fewer stories, five to six, um, or or seven or more basically. Um, so it is a form that's, that's supposed to simplify things, but we've just had kind of topically hot off the press, um, another government announcement um, in the last 24 hours, um, which is very, very positive news um, that um, they are basically um, doing away with the EWS1 um, for um, anything that's, um, that, that's no longer deemed high rise. So um, 18 metres, below 18 metres, they're no longer going to require it is what they're saying. So they will still ask the valuer to assess things. Um, and give their professional opinion on, on the risk and, and, and if they feel that there's any, any works that need to be looked at. Um, but it, it's, it's a real plus, you know, a, a real step forward in the, in the right direction as far as, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have been quite anxious on here trying to think, OK, can I sell? Can I re review my mortgage and what have you? So it's still got to filter through to the mortgage lenders. But a few of the big mortgage lenders have been quoted in the article um and those lenders will obviously start to filter through and they will start to interpret that accordingly um and yeah i i think it should um yeah release a lot of a lot of people to allow them to go off and and, and do what they may have not been able to do over the last year or two so um be time for one more I think before we before we wrap up um somebody has asked um does the remaining length of the lease affect the RICS valuation don't know if that's something anyone can answer um, tricky one yeah I suppose if if the lease is below 80 years usually that will affect the the valuation of the property because 80 years is is classed as, as a low lease um, so it could affect it could affect the valuation price. Yeah. Particularly. Yeah. Just to, just to add to that. Oh. Yeah. Because when a, a mortgage lender, again, from our perspective, we have to declare how many years are left to run on the lease um, and they have minimum. Again, it varies slightly from lender to lender. Um, but as, as Chanel says, if it's below 80 years and it's deemed to be below, if you've got a mortgage being granted for 25, 30 years at the end of that, how many years are left? So it can affect you know, future saleability. So that from a mortgage lender point of view, they're going to protect the, the, their risk as such. So um, it is something that does get taken into consideration if it is a low lease, yeah. Great. 
Thank you. We've still got a few questions, um, but but we are running out of time, I'm afraid. So we are we are going to wrap it there. Um, before before we finish, I've just got one more poll question actually that I'd like to launch. Um, so if you could take a look and just let me know your thoughts. Um, Chanel, while we're waiting for that, I understand there is an incentive available to people at the moment. Yeah, so there is an incentive that we're offering. So um, from obviously this webinar, if you're looking to staircase and um, complete on your staircase, we will actually reimburse you back um, the valuation cost. Um, which is worth around £300. So as Gary said, there are two valuations. So I'm, I'm referring to the RICS valuation. So the first valuation that you'll get done, not the mortgage valuation. Sure. Mortgage valuation Thank you. Generally free, uh, just three, three. Okay. Great. Um, so thanks for answering the uh, the poll questions there. We're, um eighty two percent of you said after attending the webinar you would purchase more shares. So so a small a small increase there in percentage. That's that's great to see. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, um, and thank you to our speakers for for being here and sharing sharing your knowledge. Um, you will receive a follow up link via Zoom after this webinar. Um, so for those of you who um, we haven't been able to get through your questions today. There'll be all the details in there as to how to get in touch and actually we can follow up with you afterwards and answer your questions um, and the team from Gateway will be able to have a chat with you. So do, do get in touch with us using, using those details and we'll, we'll follow up. Um, Chanel, if you could just remind us again of the website, please, where people can go to find the application form. Yep, so they can go to gatewayhousing.org.uk and they can download the staircase and application form there. Um, but if they can't download it on the web, if they can't download it on the website for any reason, they can email the sales inbox, which is sales at gatewayhousing.org.uk. Fantastic. Thank you all very much again for joining us. Um, thank you to our speakers and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Take care. Good evening. <laughs>